So I booked a flight and I, um, I told my main producer that I was, that I was leaving. And you were that just going to walk? I was just going to walk. By this stage, I was you at- You had a gutful. Had a gutful. Gone. I was at breaking point. Emotional, physical, mental, everything, right? We weren't getting fed, not enough sleep, not enough money. Not, like we were getting really poorly treated. I was at the edge. But they hold your contract over your head. The contracts are- 30 odd page document that is written in gibberish that we don't really understand, right? We weren't sit, sat down with a lawyer explaining step by step what the contract was. So there's no process around, there's not um, given the, the benefit of, of legal advice or even no, no. Some, somebody who can um, assist you in, in, that, in that process, it's just put, put before you sign it. Just sign it, we weren't told, we weren't explained any part of it. It was just sign it, get someone to witness it, catch you later. And so they hold that over the con. They say, well, you're, if you go home, you're in breach of contract. So by this stage, I didn't care. Like I was literally at a point of thinking about self-harm. So... What do you mean? That's a dramatic statement. Well, it is a dramatic statement, but when you, you're locked up in a room with an, an absolute monster of a human being, right? You're not getting any support from the people that are supposed to be looking after you. You can't reach out to your friends on the show. Your friends at home don't understand what's going on because they can't even imagine the, the world that is inside that, that machine that is married at first sight. So you're completely alone in this. You're absolutely alone. You seem a pretty strong individual with a, you know, a fairly strong personality. Someone lesser, if you're looking at sort of self-harm, what does that mean for somebody with a sort of lesser disposition? Wow, I think. You know, your imagination runs wild. There was a few people in this cast, I'm not going to name names, but a few people in this cast that I had some serious concerns about. Absolute serious concerns about. Um, They'd say they're making a TV show, they're not there as a counselling service. Um, well, that's actually a line that was fed to us. Right. One of the lines that were fed to us was, <laughs> Dave, or to the group of us, in fact, in a, in a group meeting, we were told we were boring. So this is before the first, uh, sorry, the second dinner party. We were told we were boring and they said, listen, guys, suck it up. We're, we're, we're not a dating service. We're here to make a TV show. Here, I thought they were a dating service. They were trying to find us. That's what we were sold in the first few weeks. And there was speculation that Maybe it wouldn't even get to air uh, during that period. They were just going to call time on well, it. And, they and threatened scrap that. It. They threatened that with us. But obviously, that was just how, another. How was experience. that ex expressed to you? They said, "If you guys don't smarten up, we're just going to can the show." They said. They so said in, in that sort of language. Yeah. Smarten up, or we're going to can the show. Hundred percent. They said to us that we're boring. Um, that it doesn't. It's not coming across good on the camera. That um, that we're easily replaceable. They would rather deal with writing us out of the storyline than having to deal with some of the behaviour that was going on. This is for couples, though, who end up um, being sent home, essentially, uh, in those first, in that, in that period that you're talking about. That's half the cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people, it's, it's it, those people were so grossly mismatched. Like, they've gone too far this year gone way too far this year like to find a person's deal breakers and it's not just mine and then deliberately match them with somebody else that has those deal breakers is just immoral so you, the filming the filming suspended you guys are told to 
shape up or, or we're going to ship you out. Yeah, yeah. Like, the sacrifice you that you've made yeah, already yeah. to this at this point in time, and you must feel like. For me, I was glad by that stage. Just a commodity. Not well, yeah, nothing. they didn't give a stuff about us. I mean, by that stage, I was almost glad. I almost because I meant that would mean I go home. It's all fake. It's all mm. so the conversations are led. I mean, they are our own words, but the conversations are led. Give us an example. So, <clears throat> a good example was last night with Chris. Chris was trying to manufacture drama that I, that I said that you know, he'd be better matched with Hayley, right? And I th so this, this was at the uh, reunion or re boys' night out, was it? Yeah, the boys' night the out. The boys' yeah. night out, which has followed the, pretty much close to the end of filming and you've come back for that boys' night yeah, out specifically. Yeah, yeah. So that's one right. example. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was the fakest conversation I've ever had with anyone. And I just shut him down and said, mate, I've got no issue with you. you know. um, probably another example was uh, Josh and uh, Michael were told that they should go Ivan because he asked them to confront Alex about the fact that they were having sex. Um, and Alex was denying that they had been intimate. And so that night, um, before Josh walked up, he was told that he had to confront uh, Ivan about the fact that he back Go around. after him, you mean? Go after yeah, go after him. For Lay him. into him. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And so... The more colourful, the better. Oh, 100%, yeah. 100%. Well, another example. <laughs> Lizzie, this is what I find out later, Lizzie's sitting on the couch at the dinner party with a near wig in her ear. So one of the cast members that's sitting on there that's supposed to be a genuine married couple, right? Lizzie's sitting there with an an earwig in, in her ear. Meaning what? And she's being fed, and she's telling the cast that that she's that they're boring, and this and that trying to fire up the cast. Right. So the the lines are being fed directly to her, yeah. and they're not even making any secret of the fact. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think they wanted that public knowledge, to be honest. Mm. I mean, how corrupt can you get? I mean. If this was real, if people actually knew the goings on inside the show, and there's stuff that I can't legally even tell you, right? I can't even tell you the best bits. But if you actually knew, if you were a fly on the wall inside that, those hotel rooms, right? You would be shocked that it's happening in a Western country. You would absolutely be appalled that human beings are being treated the way they are and manipulated and people that are vulnerable people. I don't think I was a vulnerable person. Gullible, yes, but not vulnerable. There's other people in the cast that are certainly very vulnerable. And I'm no expert, I'm no psychological expert, but I could see from day one that they were vulnerable people. Mm. This, uh, what you're saying, it just sounds like it's a complete and utter fraud. Well, and the I, public are being sold this fraud uh, they're being led to. They're being asked to follow it. They're being led to believe that uh, it's one way. When what you're telling me is that it's completely the opposite. Well, the thing, the thing that absolutely drives me insane is that the classic line that's constantly fed to us by production was, "You signed up for this, David. You signed up for this." You know what? I didn't sign up to be matched with a tall, smoking, recovering drug addict. I did not sign up for that. Not in a million years did I ever think that I would be so poorly matched. Hmm. Now, the thing that drives absolutely being my bonnet is they're so good at making you believe that you are going to find the love of your life. Hmm. You know, absolutely. I later then find out that they knew that Haley was speaking to the press when we, before we landed in Sydney back from the, our honeymoon. I'm putting myself at some considerable risk by speaking out like I am now. Well, yeah, and, and you are. And I have, it hasn't even aired yet. And you're speaking out in a way that I think is uh, unfamiliar to, to uh, producers of the show and the confidentiality agreements and the contracts that they, uh, they have you all signed. So you are, you must feel bloody strongly about this, Dave. Steve, they're going to have blood on their hands sooner or later. What do you mean? Mark my words. 
you're talking about a guy that's been a professional, I've been a professional athlete for many years, meant cutting between 10 and 13 kilos of weight every, every fight. So you'd say mental toughness is my forte. And I was pushed to a breaking point. Not once, not twice, multiple times on that show. Multiple times. Losing my, just losing my, my mental health. Right now, is that somebody that is mm. mentally trained to deal with adversity? And it, there's other people that are very vulnerable on the show. That, All in the name of entertainment. Mate, I tell you now, is someone's going to lose their life on that show sooner or later. Guarantee it. And, and the public don't know about it because we're bound up in such strict contracts. Mm. But, mate, you know, I won't be able to sleep at night knowing if someone does take their own life because of this show, I won't be able to sleep at night if I didn't do anything to try to stop it. Because it is bigger than just you, isn't it? It's, it's, it's about the well-being of everyone involved. Dude, I walked in there just giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. Right, so we're, we, we have, you know what, they might even show me in a positive light. You know, very likely, I don't think I gave them anything to show me in a negative light. And I'm still, I'm still wanting to speak out, you know. Um, the thing is, is that people are sold on this dream of love, right? And, and people are sold on this dream of let's get famous through reality TV. So it attracts the wrong kinds of people into it to start with then they don't do the proper vetting. They don't have duty of care. If they had duty of care, you spend f five minutes with Hayley and you realise that she's never going to be a, a correct match for me. I mean, you're talking, you've matched somebody that's broken the law for the majority of her life and they've put her with the copper's son. <laughs> All you need is love. But <laughs> look... Look, I, I mean, what happens though... What happens when someone does take their life, Steve? Mm. Who goes to jail for that? Does anyone go to jail? Or is, what happens? Who's accountable, you're asking? Yeah, who, who's accountable? Mm. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, to be honest, like, I, I'm... Has, has it got to that point where we're, we're talking about something that's actually quite criminal, the way that they, they conduct yeah, themselves? Yeah, well, I mean, being, that, lock, that's, that, that's being locked in a room, told yeah. to, if you want food, call Uber Eats, right? because you can't leave your apartment, being locked in a room, not being fed, working ridiculous hours. So one of the production days was a 16, 17 hour day that we paid 150 bucks for and fed two, two bacon and egg muffins. Mm. We don't have a phone to call a cab to go down the street. We've got no way to, to, to leave. They'd stop you, physically stop you from leaving. Guantanamo Bay without the waterboards, it sounds just a, a crazy situation. I mean, I don't know how they get away with it. Yeah. I don't understand how we're seven seasons in and, and I'm, I'm one of the only people speaking out like I am. Like how does, how does in this day and age of modern technology, how has this not gotten, gotten out before? And you, you, you're confident you, you've got this right? That, because you, some big statements that you actually have got this right and that it's not just some sort of figment of your imagination or, or some bitterness and resentment that's um, that fueling this that you actually this is what's going on and that this this is criminal and that well to be honest <laughs> Hayley has her flaws right I, don't get me wrong right but she didn't ask to be put with someone like me either but when you watch these shows Steve you don't understand that in TV, you think it's four weeks. Reality is eight weeks. Mm. You think that... So think wisely before you sign up for, for, yeah, the, yeah. for this. And, um, there's nothing reality about reality TV. Yeah. No yeah. fairy tale. There's no fairy tale. Yeah. I'll tell you now, I would never do it again. And I would... If, if anyone's out there thinking about going on this show because they think they're going to get famous, it's not worth it. There is no money. There is no, the brand deals and all that. I don't know about that yet because we, we haven't even gone to where. As far as Haley's concerned, you've been pretty, uh, pretty strident in your views. To, did you wish her happiness and, and hope she 
makes the most of her life. Look, Haley's a bit bitter. She's a little bit bitter uh, as well. She's a special creature, that woman. Um, well, maybe one day you can get together and have a laugh about it, but... Uh, not at the moment, no. Nah, there's quite it. a bit of animosity between us. Tara, if you've done this for X amount of seasons, and you're listening to my genuine real concerns right now, right, from a, someone that's lived it. She's sitting in an ivory tower watching this play out and she's pulling all the strings. Understand that if someone takes their life, that is on your head. The blood's on her hands. Blood's on her hands. And that is not a matter if, but when. That is absolutely, do not miss what I'm saying right now. It's not a matter about if, but when. And that blood will be on, because she's at the top of the ivory tower, on her head, and anybody else that wants to partake in that company. I'm probably someone that is prepared to share it. It needs to be said, and I, I will say it. I think that somebody needs to know this needs to be stopped. I wanted to actually physically jump off the balcony. My best friend was just like, you've got to get out of here. Like, you're going to die. You will not leave until you start acting like yourself, the person that we employed, and that you basically, uh, you sign the contract, your ass is mine. That's, that's what they said to, to me. If you've got something, we'll take it. I, I'm scared that there will be another season. That's what I'm scared of. It's like really going to be very bad. Oh, someone will die. And you try to speak to the um, psychologist, but then everything gets fed back to production. What I learned needs to be shared.